Let's see if we could get a knife blade out of that. In this video, we are gonna go and look for flint and chert. We're also gonna show how to make stone tools, arrowhead spear points, knives out of this chert that we find. I'm looking where I can, but even with limited, even with limited option, I'm still finding stuff. It's really good stuff. This almost looks as if it is a limestone, but it's so high quality that I should see if the sparks. I should give it a test. I got this too. It's not so great, but the quartzite stuff. Something to mess with. Got this flake of uh, Texas material here, and uh, I've been working on this stuff a little bit. And I made some dart points to teach some classes on campus that I'll be doing. This one I threw a few times, so the tip dinged and got a little dirty. It's a pretty nice point. I like it. This Texas stuff is awesome, man. And uh, they wanted a early archaic style point. That's coming from this kind of rock. I'll work on this, see what I could come up with. So what I'm gonna do here, ground all the edges. Uh, I'm gonna try to knock it down with a tiny billet and then go to indirect. All right, so I knocked it down to that shape. Gotta run flakes across here and thin it a little bit. All right, I've got it down to this with the indirect. Gonna thin it, shape it, flake it, make it look nice. Get it flaked up. Thin down. This is A side. B side. Alright. I'm gonna call that done. Little Dalton. Pretty nice point, man. Yeah, I'll bring that in to show the students as well. Cool stuff. I like this material a lot. Doing some reading here. And I'm gonna go over some of this real quick. It's uh, wild plants found in uh, prehistoric fire pits in Pennsylvania at a Paleo-Indian site. Some of these I don't know. Acolyphia? I never heard of that. Little is known of the use of this plant. Amaranth. So... Amaranth is used as a spinach. The seeds of the plant are often parched or ground into a meal that is baked or eaten as a porridge. Blackberry. We all know blackberry, right? Buck bean. There are no documented cases of prehistoric uses, although it definitely can be eaten. The roots can make and be made into bread. Cherries. Chinopod. They found it in human feces. Early woodland context in Kentucky. We all know grapes. Hawthorn, plum. Grows on a small tree or shrub. It is usually crooked with thorny branches. To make excellent sewing needles. That is good to know. The plums were often dried for winter uses, usage in the Great Lakes region. Medicinal purposes, astringent and cardiac properties. Interesting. 
oxalis. I don't know what that is. A salad green. Mildly tonic and refreshing. The Iroquois exploited the plant. No nutritional data can be located. See, this is the problem. No nutritional data can be located. I really want to know about these wild plants. Panicum. Direct archaeological evidence of the explo exploitation of Panicum is available from early woodland feces recovered from Salt's cave. Little is known about the exploita exploitation or preparation. The seeds may have been used as a grain or cereal. Physalis. Hmm. Plants are prolific and were probably part of many prehistoric dietary patterns. Berries. This grows in sandy soils. Pokeberry. Uh, pokeweed. That's uh, toxic. Dye source. The pulp of the berries is edible. Err. Thought it was toxic. Silene, I don't know what that is. Absolutely no information was available on the silene plant other than sometimes cooked as a vegetable. No nutritional data could be located. Smartweed. Here's a plant I am very interested in. Um, it's supposedly spicy. Employed smartweed to cure body flux by wiping the anus with it. Bro, a cure for the piles. Seeds are also used for making a meal that has the same general characteristics as buckwheat flour. The leaves are useful as seasoning. And wintercress. Possible use in a salad or pot herb. Hmm. Okay, so this is out of the book, uh, Stratified Paleo-Indian Archaic Site, Shoni Minisink. Um, I would like to discuss some of the, some of the foodstuffs in these books. Uh, if you are interested, so if you're interested in wild edibles, this is a good book, Studies in Archaeology. Uh, let me know if you want me to continue um, reading little snippets like this, uh, especially with the wild edibles and uh, stuff that was eaten in the past. And I will continue to do so. Just let me know in the comments. I'm going to keep this video super short and see how it does. Like, comment, subscribe. And let me know what you think. Uh, that was a very little bit of information, but I liked what I saw there. I liked that it said no nutritional data could be found so somebody needs to do that okay gonna call it here and let me know what you guys think have a good one okay guys i am doing another giveaway contest this time for a couple arrowheads and a stone knife. Uh, all you gotta do, comment your number between 1 and 2,000. And for the arrowheads, it's gonna be separate, the knife and the arrowheads. So for the arrowhead gifts, giveaway gift, you're gonna put a timestamp with your favorite part of this video and why it's your favorite part of this video in the comment section. You have to like the video, you have to subscribe, and you have to comment in order to win. That's it on the rules. Good luck, guys. In this video, we are going to go and look for flint and chert. We're also going to show how to make stone tools, arrowhead spear points, knives, out of this chert that we find.
High quality limestone. You can nap that. Many rocks to look at. No rocks. None. We just kind of like to get a feel of what kind of stone is in the area. Somebody cooked some fish right here. I see some pole holders. Charcoal. Somebody cooked fish there and there. There's probably huge fish in here. Man. Let's walk around a little bit. I really, I really love spots like this. I got my fishing pole. I got my license. It's just my fishing pole is a uh, ultralight. I don't know what I'll hook in here. I don't want to catch a sea monster. Break the pole. Look at that. What an awesome spot. Can't find flint. Even at a spot like this. This is so freaking beautiful, man. Even at a spot like this. You could find stuff to nap. Perfect. I'm going to leave that for another napper. So the way archaeologists determine the date on things, and I wanted to explain this, this will get covered over time, this, this little fire pit here. See how the stuff is already washed out? 
That's a movement of a site. This will be an archaeological site some, someday. Within like a week, it'll be an archaeological site. And that'll be called, uh, I'll give it a name. What do we call it? Fisherman Fire Pit Archaeology Site 12. So, okay, Site 12 right here. We find, we found a piece of charcoal. Now, I touched it with my hands, so the site is ruined forever. Because I touched it with my hands, the site is ruined forever. You cannot get an accurate date. You cannot get any information. I mean, you could get a little information, like if there's fish bones here. You could see what kind of fish they ate. But when you touch things with your hands, you ruin the dating. There is a modern drug right there. So you might be able to get some... Uh, DNA off of that. Alright, so when you touch it with your hands, let's say you're touching an ancient site, it'll throw the dating off. I'll put up some information here so, so you could, uh, I don't really know how to accurately describe it, so I'll throw up a screenshot here showing how the dating process works. But when you touch it with your hands, you throw the dating off. But most of the site here, for example, this is a good example. Let's say a uh, Paleo Indian camped right here 12,000 years ago. You see this being washed down, the charcoal being washed down into the river. A lot of sites were lost like that, or just entirely buried by huge mudslides coming through. Very deep, like eight feet down. There might be something right here. It's pretty cool. Pretty awesome to me. But anyway, I'm just rambling. But you can you can date sites with charcoal like that. You just gotta do it with the right machinery and the the right technique. And you get an accurate date. Well, within hundreds of years at least. So it could be all it could be uh plus or minus a hundred years or two hundred years. But you get a fairly good idea of when it happened. And I'm sure they will uh, advance that technology soon enough. Alright, I'm done rambling for here. That's... Man, should I fish here? I'm not going to catch anything. I don't really have bait. Could try to dig up a worm or something. Get back to you guys if I uh, come across anything around here. This is just a stop on the road. There's Miss Leah looking at the river. Right there. The amazing Susquehanna. Be back soon, guys. When I was doing um, archaeology in Connecticut, I was working on a spot that looked like this, much narrower of a river. And the ground looked like this. And I was doing uh, test pits with a, I forget what it's called, but it's a sh two shovels. Clamp them together and you pull the dirt out. And we were putting them into the, machi into the uh, sifting machines. And uh, I wasn't this close to the river there. It looked very similar to this, just narrower, like it's a but we were up by the knotweed, like, like what's up there. And we were looking to protect the site. It was in a major city. And we were just digging. And I was, I was digging and pulling. This is before I got sick. I was digging and pulling the things out. And I noticed I was starting to get chest pain. So I was kind of bummed a little bit. But I was, I was working hard. I was digging the hole. I forget how deep we had to go down. But it was pretty deep because of this muck. Muck. The sites are buried deep. And I pulled out a couple pieces of ceramic, a couple flakes. No points or anything like that. But um, on that day, I got really sick. That's when I first hurt my shoulder. Something, something happened. And I had pain in here, straight through to here. And I was like, something's up. And I sat down. And I was sweating a lot. And it wasn't that hot. I was like, what the hell? And then I started puking. 
and I was like, what the hell? What the hell's going on here? So I got really scared, and I talked to my manager, and he's like, all right, go home, get checked out, whatever, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I went home. I think I went to the ER, and they're like, no, your EKG is fine. It's not your heart. Go home. Whatever. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I called my boss back to tell him what was up. And he was like, yeah, no, with something like that, we got to let you go. So uh, try to find another job somewhere else. I was like, what the what the hell, man? I had one incident. Well, was, they had a quota of Yeah, they had a quota of how much had to be done in a day. And because I got sick, they fell behind on the quota. And I guess me getting sick screwed them. So, but this spot here reminds me of that. And uh, I did find pottery, ceramics, um, woodland, woodland period stuff. So I don't know what happened with that site or anything because I got laid off, fired, whatever you want to call it. But still good memories. I love doing that stuff. And I'm going to be doing it again. Soon. Soon, soon. So for anyone uh, new to the channel, uh, with that story, I had thyroid cancer. That's what was wrong. They fixed it six years ago now. They took it out. I'm good to go. I have some side effects. Uh, but I'm still doing this kind of stuff, so I am good. But that's, uh, that's what happened. The pedic doctor wanted to do an MRI of my shoulder, and when they did the MRI of the shoulder, they saw the cancer in my thyroid. So then, I never got my shoulder fixed because I had to go get the cancer fixed. So now I'm trying to fix the shoulder, and I'm in physical therapy right now. I have a week off from physical therapy. Uh, they canceled, not me. So I figured I'd come do this and film. Well, this and is its own kind of healing. Yeah. I always want to go in, but... The fish! Fish chase, chasing little fish. Alright, let's go make sure we aren't getting towed. Because I hear... <laughs> yep. I hear a thing. Alright, so I am going to get back on the road. And look for more rocks and stuff like that. Maybe stop it if I find any ancient sites or anything that I can talk about that's actually reported. Like a recorded archaeological site. Maybe I'll go over that, stop some places, I don't know. I'm kind of just winging this whole trip, but I'm loving it so far, so... Come on, guys. Let's go. We got stuff to do. We can't just stare at a pretty river forever. <laughs> sure we could. Sure we could. Alright, heading out. We just came over to this park just to get a little walk in. And guys, look. Do you know what that is? That is pineapple weed. If you take some, crush it. Oh gosh. Can you smell it? It smells so good and it smells like pineapple. And you can make it into a tea. Look at it, it's all here. This is really, really rare for me to see. I never see this stuff. I'm pretty sure Pennsylvania is the only place I've seen it, honestly. And it smells and tastes so freaking good. Unfortunately, we are on a ball field, so I don't know if they use any um, herbicides here. So I'm not going to pick any. But that's so exciting, look. Rupert. Covered bridge was built in 1847 by Jesse Beard. Cost him a thousand six hundred. There it is. There's the crew. The bridge was damaged during a flood, and the waterway it's over top is called Fishing Creek. So I should probably fish in there then. And there it is. So there is Fishing Creek, and there is Rupert Bridge, Covered Bridge. Look at that. 
That is a good looking bridge. Printer B floating in the air up there. And some beautiful creeks around here. is having issues. <laughs> Jeez. Bet you that's what dinosaurs sounded like. What do you say? Right here in the gravel, right next to the sidewalk, is some Jasper. Oh wow. It's just gravel. They uh, chopped it up for Look at that. Hmm. Is that it as well? I know. Let's find out. No. I don't know what that is. Looks like it, but. White charity stuff. Hmm. Weird. Let's look at this real quick. Rainy. Nappable stuff, it's not the greatest. I should have my um, flint and steel to test, her, test if it sparks or not. Hmm. Are not pets? Why not? Oh, this has all the state animals. Is that a potato? Don't feed the squirrels potatoes. It's another spot along the Susquehanna. dipped it in uh, horseradish that I bought at this place. The place is called Wild for Salmon, and it is amazing. That is like the best salmon I've ever had. And I split it with Leia. She took half, I took half. And it was fillets, like really thin and really good. Salty, but good. And then this is a um, traditional smoked. So I'm going to try this in a little bit. I'm still thawing. It's already cooked, it's already smoked, it says ready to eat. And that was super spicy, super good. I'm 
nose is still running from it. Look at that. Smoked salmon. Wow. I think I got my new favorite travel tree. It's almost like a super soft jerk, but it's salmon. Mm. Wow, super salty, but super good. Got a little bit of it. Some of it's good, some of it's not. I'll be able to get points out of all that. Look at that. That's going to get a nice point, even with cracks. Smaller points out of that. Good stuff. PA Rock. So far, so good. First few days of the next rock trip. Got quite a bit of stuff. This is only one bag. All right, guys. I will be probably out about another week. And then I'll be uploading. I'm down at creeks like this, I'm looking for something that looks like limestone. And right here, there's splint sticking off of the limestone. So now I know there's splint in this area. That is splint. This chunk of stuff right here is splint. Let's see if I could get it off in one piece. Hang on. See, there's the limestone. So this whole piece is limestone with the exception of this stuff, which is the flint right here, very small on the surface. So now I know there's flint here with this limestone. So I'm gonna fish a little bit and look around as I go. of a lot of flint. I'm seeing a little bit. But that doesn't mean it's not here. It just means it's not here a lot. So I'll keep looking around, keep fishing. I'm not really catching anything either. Just saw a fish jump though. Keep looking. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hear that ring? Mm -hmm. Usually means good material. 
it's churdy. It's limestone with chert. So you can nap this. You can use this. It's just rough. But it'll work. And it's very, very sharp. You could nap this real quick into a spear point or arrowhead. See it flakes? If it flakes, you could use it. Good stuff. Good limestone here. So that is churdy limestone. It has chert in it. Look around a little bit more. I saw this smooth surface and wanted to check it out. Um, it's not chert. It is some kind of sandstone, but look, it's got fossils in it. See that one? And then on the flip side, there's a whole lot of little fossils. Ah, many fossils here in the sandstone material. There's some really gorgeous ones, look at that. Is anybody good at identifying fossils? I don't know the first thing about that, unfortunately. Looks like we got a few different types. these guys up at a gas station. It was like 30 cents. Some grubs. I don't know if those are grubs. I don't know what those are. But I'm going to try to catch something with them. It's very uh, freeze cracked and damaged. Can't really use that for too much except for maybe flint and steel for fire starting. And I'll clip that in here how you could use this. I'll show you how you could use this. Stuff that looks like that, you can use it. Here's some more very weathered flint that you could really only use for flint and steel and fire starting and only this top half here. The flint is right there, the rest of this is limestone. Seems like small pieces here. I'm not seeing any any big chunks of this stuff.
as of right now, um, when I come to a spot like this, I'm not looking to collect the flint here, but I am mapping it. I have a project that I'm working on, and I'm mapping chert locations and chert density, how much chert is washing out into rivers, and was it available to Native Americans in the past, and did they use it? Which, uh, from what I'm seeing so far, yes, they did, especially in this area. Look at it. It's like perfectly just sitting there waiting for you. I don't think it's flint. No? No, I'm going to check it, though. Oh, it might be limestone, right? Just limestone. Yeah. It had that nice smooth surface though. Tricked me. Alright. Ooh, that wind. That yeah, feels nice. So, uh, for this location, I would say that there's probably about one piece of flint, one small piece of flint, minor flint, about one every 10 to 20 feet, which is actually quite high for any location, but uh, sometimes it is it's way more abundant than that. And in doing this, I get to enjoy stuff like that. Look at that. That is beautiful. So, at this location here, a lot of stuff is covered in this silt, so it's harder to tell what you're looking at when it looks like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head upriver. I'm going to follow this river today. This is going to be today's journey, uh, today's adventure, is head up the river and see if there's any flint anywhere along this river. What is it? I don't know. That's one of the weirdest things I've seen in a creek. It's just a regular stone. It has some kind of an X with patterns on it. Are they like... I don't know. I don't want to... Engraved in or... I don't know. I don't feel an engraving. Strange, man. You find some strange things in creeks. <laughs> Alright. Head out. More fossils here than flint. And some of them. Underwears. Oh, never mind. Let's crush that. So just an example of some of the stuff you could actually make from creeks. I didn't get this stuff from this particular creek. I got this from a different creek. But this is a spear point for an atlat, a dart. You throw, the, you throw this with a long spear, with a spear thrower. And then this is a limestone-based chert, much like what we found down here. And this is just a knife for cutting. This is a crude knife. This is not a fancy knife. I just percussion shaped this. I didn't do any flaking. Just percussion, just hitting the blades off. I didn't shape the base any. I just wanted to see if it would work, and it made a nice knife. And that's a perfect spear point. I love this thing. Okay, let's get going. We are heading to check out a free campsite, but I don't know seems a little weird. There was a guy releasing a wild raccoon at the end of the corner here. He had a cage and he was struggling with it. The thing was backing itself up into the cage like it didn't want to be let go. The guy was insisting. It seemed, uh, I don't know, a little weird, man. Releasing raccoons back into the wild at the end of the campsite. We'll see. I'll get back to you. It's probably going to be weird. Usually if you see something weird going into a free campsite, it's going to be weird. So, pro tip, trust me on that. Get back to you soon.
Let's see if we can get a knife blade out of that. We will try. Looks good in there. All right. Try to snap it. This is going to be incredibly tough stuff. So I'm really going to have to hit it. It looks good in here, so I don't want to waste that. It also looks good here. I don't want to waste that. I just want to get rid of this chalky junk. See that? Uh, I came across a whole bunch of artifacts with stuff like that running through it. Yeah, the line going through it, man. Weak spot. Gotta be careful. Those overshots. Don't break it. Don't break it. Don't break it. Okay, let's break it. <laughs> I think is the Cheshire Quartzite. I mean, it flakes really good. It's like made of junk metal. There's a uh, fire hydrant, uh, hubcaps. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at those colors. Nice catch. Hey guys, in this video we're looking for rocks for primitive stone tools. We're also going camping and fishing, and the uh, scenery in this one is really great. Hope you enjoy. Have a good one, guys.
that. Okay. Up. Burger time. Mmm. Do you want a pickle? Okay, so Leah's got powdered milk, and I'll put that in the product list. But I also have this stuff, Trubia, with vanilla flavor that I use instead of sugar in my coffee. And this stuff is great. Like, it tastes really good. Zero calories, zero sugar. It has vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. I didn't know that. But, like, no sugar. And this stuff is really great. Smells really strong. I'm all tired right now watching now. I'm gonna be like <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> trying to sleep. Record myself if I'm like that. We got break stands whipped butter. That's probably too much, but whatever. It's... Oh god. Problems with filming with one hand and eating with the other. Try throwing an at water. <laughs> I'm not even filming it. <laughs> Alright, you're gonna edit this to make it look like I kinda know what I'm doing. Alright, well, butter. Make sure you say the name of the stuff again. Break stones with butter. Whoop. And a little container of Old Bay. Old Bay. in a pan when you're in the bush. Boil water in it. Got stuff sticking to the pan? Boil some water. It will really help you get all that, all of that stuff up. And you don't have to spend so much time scrubbing. And you just lick the rest out. And then you just lick the rest out. You lick the rest out. Yes. Also, we'll sanitize it. So if you do two changes of water, take that out, scrub it while it's still hot, put another wash of water in, put it back in, and then you have it sanitized as well.
spider. I wanted to stop here because all right in this area here along that whole ridge line and on this side was a bunch of paleo indian sites and i just wanted to see what the area looked like see what the energy feels like here it's pretty crazy i don't know too much about the specific info i just glanced in a book but seems like a pretty special place to me it's beautiful. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got that on the fly rod?
That was beautiful. Look at those colors. Nice catch. poop but I'm not even sure about that it might have just been a big person um, I haven't been recording too much because I've uh, I've had like a six-day headache now from my neck apparently it's not even my shoulder so I get to go see a neurosurgeon soon but I wanted to record some stuff as much as I could while I'm out here and uh, I'll make sure I get something good for you guys. Okay. Fire's almost out. It doesn't look like it, but it's almost out. And then I'm going to go in the tent and go to sleep. And hopefully it won't rain tonight. Have a good one, guys. See you in the morning. across the street here. Take a look down. Yeah. Beautiful. And this is marble marble. Look at this. Pretty. It's really glittery. So this was a, uh, a passageway for Paleo-Indians going through Vermont. All Native Americans, really. Maybe take their canoes and sail that way. Back behind. Sail. Row. <laughs> Maybe they had sails. Who knows? Just this little town stopped in. Just a stretch. Saw this sign and I saw the marble bridge and I was like, oh. Definitely stop in here. So, there's chunks of marble right there. 
vehicle. All right, just a quick stop. All right, so I am in the town of, it looks like it says Proctor, uh, just driving through. And I wanted to stop to look. I read something about Otter Creek as a main, main passageway for Paleo-Indians, but it says here on the sign, all Native Americans, which makes sense. And Leah ran up there, right there. Leah ran right up there because she saw marble sticking out the road. She wanted to get a video of it. So, just stopping for a minute. She's coming back and I'm gonna take off and see if there's anything else that we could uh, show you guys. Okay, I am out, see you in a bit. Starbucks Frappuccino. I, um, I've been trying to get just regular coffee. Um, this stuff. All town coffee. It's like you grind your own beans in there. And, pause. Grind your own beans, and it's been tasting really disgusting. So I just picked up another Starbucks coffee. Okay, Leah's back in the car, so we're gonna head out. Be back in a bit. It's like made of junk metal. There's a uh, fire hydrant, uh, hubcaps. It's all junk metal, scrap metal. They made a train out of it, steampunk train. Let's walk around this thing. <laughs> what the heck, guys? So it says West Rutland Art Park. That's, uh, looks like that took a lot of effort to make this thing. Pretty crazy. Alright. I just want to stop and look at that. It's pretty cool. Back on the road. See you guys in a bit. All right, so we're here in Vermont, and I'm looking for a quartzite that the ancient people used here. And I found some in the gravel here, but it's uh, it's not in the river. The river's right there. I just checked. But this is what it looks like when you crack it open. And it seems to be pretty good material. We're definitely in the uh, quartzite formation. So this, I think, is the Cheshire quartzite. I mean, it flakes really good. It would work really good with indirect. I'm going to take some samples from here so I could test it against cobbles when I find the cobbles. So it's all over this, um, all in this gravel here, all different colors. So, We've got gray... Red, blue, iron gray. stained, red, um, some milky quartz mixed in. But this river is uh, all muddy, so it's not in the river here. From all the uh, reports I saw, they used the gray. The gray quartzite? Yeah. Grayish white, I remember reading. Let's test some of these. Hmm. I didn't know quartzite could have cracks in it like that. But it does. Look. I see that. So let me get a good shot of that. 
Yeah, that's definitely the stuff. Huh, that's weird. Now we gotta just find a freaking moose somewhere. Where's the moose? Where are the moose? I have not moose? seen one yet. I really want to see a moose. I have to go home though. I am beat. That was days of looking for this stuff. I am wiped out. Okay. To the road. See you guys soon. See the shell on the Norman scale right there. Shell chert. Shell chert. Lot of it. There we go. Hopefully, I don't break it. Just trying to thin it a tiny bit. Kind of hinged at the shell right there. All right, 